Jesus. Can we clap our hands to the Lord Jesus? Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? We are determined to hold out to the hand. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? 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 Praise God, praise God. God is good. God is good. He is wonderful. Turn to the person beside you and said, I'm glad you're in the house of God today. Yes, sir. I'm glad we are in the house of God today. Praise God, praise God. Our pastor Grizzly is here with us today. And we are giving God thanks and happy. Praise God, praise God. And the two pastors sat down beside him, moved from up here. Oh, what a wonderful thing. A very, very wonderful thing. Yes, to be free. Sit down a little. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord today. I'm happy. You know, um, a few weeks ago, right here in church when we have Lord's Supper, I suffered a heart attack. Right in church here. And... Uh, my wife wanted me to go to the doctor at the same time, but the food was given out, and I wasn't going to leave it. Wasn't going to leave it. I came for it, and I wasn't going to leave it. And right there, Pastor Wang, God said something to him that he didn't know that I have an heart attack on there, and said, whatever sickness that you have, when you partake of this, you shall be healed. I partake and I go to the doctor the next day and when the doctor examined me, he said me he's a foolish man because I should come from the same time. But tell him, say, yes, me like to be fool, fool. Because everything is well. Them do all the tests and all the tests came back, everything wasn't good. Everything wasn't good. But the man of God said, it is done. I'm feeling good. I'm in the house of the Lord today. Um, we are glad, very, very glad and happy 
to see the presence of our pastor, Pastor Stanford Brizzo, with us today. Yes. I, I am delighted. I am delighted. I am delighted. Sir, you shall live and not die. Whatever the sickness is, it's for a purpose. And the reason for that sickness is because God knows you can endure it. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, I really appreciate our Pastor Daly and Pastor Wang. Join him down there in sitting down, holding up the man of God's hand. We give God thanks for them. We give God thanks. This place is governed by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And they are here as the under shepherd. Praise God. Today is Mother's Day, eh? And we are here to give God thanks for our mothers. Can I see all the mothers in, church, in, in the sanctuary stand today? Just stand quickly. Oh, Jesus, all of the church. Oh, my. Praise God, Brother Chris. Praise God. It's a wonderful thing. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Can we, can we as men clap our hands unto the Lord? <laughs> clap our hands unto the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. <laughs> Sister Clark, you know why I'm laughing, eh? <laughs> Oh, praise God, praise God. I'm going to be asking uh, to come with the announcement at this time. Praise God. Can we praise the Lord, everybody? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing to be in the house of the Lord. I consider it a privilege Sir, my heart, oh God, my heart full. It's lovely to see you, Pastor Grizzle. Lovely, lovely to see you. Sir, Pastor Wong, Pastor Dalis, lovely to see you too. Hallelujah. Whew. Usa. <laughs> forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Announcement. Let me first wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. And to my mom in Canada, wind beneath my wings, I love you, mommy. The announcements for this week are as follows. Please listen carefully. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday morning at 10 a.m., there's morning prayer meeting. On Tuesday at 3 p.m., there'll be visionaries. At 4 p.m., there'll be children sign language. On Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. will be prayer meeting. Our Bible study series continues the following Wednesday. On Thursday at 6.30 p.m., combined choir practice. On Saturday, May 16, there will be a work day. There will be a faith chapel work day. Praise the Lord, men. No, sir. Praise the Lord, men. The strength, you know, I need to feel the strength. Okay, so at 9 o'clock, we have a work day, and we need especially our young men. Young men, I call upon you because you are? All right, you need to come prove your strength on Saturday at 9 o'clock. At 3 p.m., Redberry resumes. Praise the Lord, Redberry. All right, please be reminded, let me go slow. Please be reminded, gentlemen, that no shorts are to be worn. And you must be wearing a pair of socks and a belt. Did you get that, gentlemen? Ladies, absolutely no slippers, please. And those who have outstanding application forms, please turn them in as soon as possible. Application form for Redbury, please turn them in as soon as possible. Sunday School Department thanks everybody for their contribution 
are the roles played in the hosting of the launch of Child's Month. Can I hear all the children praise the Lord? All right. All parents who have outstanding forms or who have not yet registered their children for fun day, please do so today after church right outside at the front. We are still appealing for volunteers for the children's fun day. And those volunteers, we're asking you to meet on the outside after church. Fun day is on May 23rd at 9.30 a.m. And we need all our children to come out and enjoy themselves. Those who submitted applications for youth in ministry, please see Sister Tamara Campbell immediately after church over by number three. And finally, as you may have heard in the prayer this morning, Sister June Hill suffered a minor stroke, and she's in the KPH Hospital, Ward 2, Bed 15. So please bear up in prayer and visit her if and when you can. God bless you. These are the announcements. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. And we're going to be asking Pastor Daly at this time to come and uh, greet the visitors and the congregation. Pastor Daly, in Jesus' name. We'll be coming to greet. And can we praise the Lord, everybody? Come on, we praise the Lord, everybody. Clap your hands to the King. Amen. Isn't God good? To give us so many blessings. Praise God, praise God, praise God. You know, I was as surprised as you were when, when we looked down and saw Pastor Grizzle, you know, coming on down. Because we thought probably some other special service, but then Mother's Day is so special. And he just decided to come and grace the mothers on Mother's Day. Amen. And we are happy, very happy to have you in church with us this morning, Pastor Grizzle. Amen. God bless you. Come on, we put our hands. This one is for Pastor Grizzle. Amen. You know, he, he has been pastoring since Bond Street some probably 40 odd years. And when we look at Pastor this morning, he looks so young. Amen. You, you, you wouldn't believe that he has been in this ministry, pastoring for well over 40 years, and it's so good to see him in the house today. Then, Pastor Wong, it's good to see you too. One of these days, we'll get a greeting like that. Amen. But we, we are happy for what we are getting at this time. Amen. And to God be the glory. When we grow up, we'll be like Pastor Grizzle. I greet the household of faith. I greet all the visitors in the house in the wonderful, exalted name of Jesus Christ. To the saints of the Most High God, we salute you. Could you put your hands together, saints? And this one is for all the saints in the house. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And then to all the visitors who are here, we would like you to know that you're very special to us. You're, you're special because you are a, you, you are a, a child of God in a different sense from us, in that you were made by him. And today, if you have not yet surrendered your heart and your life to him, then it's a good day to give everything over to Jesus. If you're in the house and you are a visitor, we would like for you to stand. We want to see you, to acknowledge you today, all the visitors in the house. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, stand and remain standing. Amen. You're very special. You're, you're special to us and you're special to God. And we deeply appreciate your taking the time out to be with us here in Faith Chapel today. We know that you could have gone anywhere else. And for whatever reason... You are here, and we say, God richly bless you. Saints of the Most High God, can we put our hands together for all the visitors in the house? And they're all around, upstairs, downstairs. Here's what we are going to do now. Don't sit us there. We, 
Look around saints and look at their faces good because you, we are going to find them wherever they are. We are going to take these few moments and we are going to leave our seats and we are going to go across to them. We are going to shake their hands. We are going to hug them and we are going to let them feel especially welcomed in the house of the Lord today. This is Faith Chapel where we share love. This is Faith Chapel where the Holy Ghost reside and therefore love is in the house. And we don't know where you're from. But if you don't know love, love is in the house today. And we are going to ask the saints just to leave your seat. Every one of us, we are going to participate. Participate. If you're at the front, you need to reach the back to all the visitors. And of course, you're not going to pass your brother. So we are going to fellowship. We are going to greet. We are going to worship. We are going to do everything together. The song says, as I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks. Come on, we stand and we sing and we glorify God and we greet the brethren and the visitors in Jesus' name. Everybody, we're all going to be participating in this in Jesus' name. Can we stand? Can we sing? Can we glorify the Lord in the name of the Lord? As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks. Brother and Sister Ramsey, 
It is good to have you in the house today. God bless you. Can we put our hands together for brother and sister Ramsey? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Sir, ma'am, good to have you in the house. And then brother Anthony's mom is in the house. Mother Mary, where are you? The Lord bless you. Bless you. Where's Mother Mary? Show me your hand, Mother Mary. Praise God. Good to have you in the house. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Oh my Hold my hand. together for the king everybody God bless you God bless you in the name of the Lord and you may be seated in the presence of the king and just before I take my seat just to inform the membership that comes this evening we normally would be having service on a Sunday night and of course because of seven days and nights last week we did not have but then tonight today being Mother's Day and it is my understanding that a lot of um, husbands are carrying their wives who are mothers out and a lot of children have made plans for parent, for, for mothers and it's going to be some starting at three, some at four, some at five. We want it to be an evening for the family where you can celebrate with mom. And so we will not have service tonight. Amen. We will take the night off, Pastor Grizzle. We'll take the night off, Pastor Wong. We'll take the night off, and then we can go and celebrate with our families, with our mothers, and have a great time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. God will richly bless you in his great name. Praise the Lord Jesus. Clap our hands unto the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Can the hushers come for me, please? Praise God. We want the hushers to come. We're going to collect some money so we can pay some bills. Church, don't get free light or free water. And I'm going to be asking us to give as generously as we can today. Praise God. During the collecting of the offering, our brother Salas will be ministering. And can we bow our heads? Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for life. We give you thanks for health. And Lord God, we thank you for what you have blessed us with. God, help us and give us a heart to give. That as we give, Lord God, it will use to glorify and honor you. Bless us all. In your name we pray and give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to wish all them, Mom, a happy Mother's Day. Hope you have a good one. Good to see you, Rev. Bless the Lord. Can you lift your hands and praise the Lord for me? Thank you, Jesus. God, you're good. You're worthy. Thank you. When peace like a river attended my way when songs like sea be us home. 
the day when the fate shall be sound. Can we just stand and clap our hands unto the Lord and say, thank you, God. You have helped us to make it well. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I just want to welcome our brother Liskal Williams, who is here in the house. Just wave your hands and praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God be praised. Amen. Okay, all right, praise God, praise God, uh, well today is Mother's Day and we want to take the time out to honor the mothers that are here with us in church today, praise God, praise God, at this time I'm going to be um, asking Pastor daily to come and make a presentation to Sister Grizzle, and then I'm going to be asking Pastor Wong to come and make a presentation to Sister Daly, and, um, and then I'm going to make a presentation to Sister Wong, who might be watching by the internet. Praise God. I'll have a word for her. Come. Come. Come, sir. And I'm going to be asking, after this, I'm going to be asking all the deacons' wife that are here to get yourself in line, to just come right here. All the deacon wife, get yourself in line. I don't need to call you another time. Come, Sister Grizzle. Praise God. And Sister Grizzle is wondering what is happening here because she just does not know, she knows nothing about this. And, um, you know, we, we have a little surprise. We can be full of surprises. But then Sister Grizzle can be full of surprises too because she don't tell nobody that pastor coming this morning. I should know. And I spoke with her Friday, you know, and we talk and talk and she didn't say full of surprises, but we have surprise for you too. Oh, can we praise the Lord? But we are very happy as a church to be blessed with a mother in Zion, like Sister Grizzle, Mother Grizzle. Amen. She has praised God. Let's put your hands together for her. Amen. Over the years, and I've been here at Faith Chapel for at least 32 years, and she has been around as a mother. Might have been a young mother then, but still a mother in Zion. Because I came and saw her mothering many, both her own children and the many others who got saved in this assembly. And over the years, she has been consistent. She has been 
a spiritual person. She has given advice and support to the many young men and young women that have passed through this assembly. And then in, her, in recent years, she has given extraordinary support to our pastor, Pastor Stanford Grizzle, in his time of illness. She has been there. If, if you don't see Sister Grizzle in church, I can tell you it has to be something extraordinary. Over 32 years at least since I've been here, it is only if church is put off because of hurricane or storm or something like that that you will not see Sister Grizzle in church. Nothing, absolutely nothing stop her morning, Sunday morning, Sunday night or Wednesday night. She's always here. And I've lived to see Sister Grizzle not being in church and it's not for hurricane or storm. Many times, day or night, she might not be here because she is taking care of our dear pastor at home, giving 100% support. Sister Grizzle, we salute you and we recognize the great work, praise God, that you have done over the many years, even to now. We know that physically, it can take a toll. Sometimes it causes knots in the shoulder, you know, those kind of things, and it build up and so forth. And we are aware, the, youth, the men's group president, he's aware that these things add up over the years. And sometimes we need a little opportunity to release the stress. Amen. So we chose not to give you flowers today because in our hearts we give that to you every day. But today, as a church, we want to hand to you this little token that represents our understanding of all the things that you're going through, that you have given of yourself. And so the men's group president, Pastor Wong, myself, and all the leadership, we just want to say to you, Sister Grizzle, Mother Grizzle, there is, you have, you have Jen Care, you have Eden Gardens, you have Bellas, and a whole host of Adam and Eve, and we just close our eyes and pull one out of the hat. And this one says, for somebody like Joyce Grizzle, we're going to ensure so she gets a stress buster massage. Facial. Spa money pedi. And some others that, you know, it comes with it. Sister Grizzle, it is our great delight to hand this to you. It is all sealed and signed and paid for. You just need to turn up and you will be taken care of from head to toe. And this is from all of us here at Faith Chapel, from the leadership and all the saints, because you recognize the tremendous support that you have given to all of us and that you're giving to our Pastor Grizzle at this time. The Lord bless you. Come on, we put our hands together. Church, for Sister Grizzle, God bless you. In the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is such a pleasure to be always in the house of God. Whatever I do, I do it from the very deep of my heart. I know and I believe with all of my heart that if you do the right, you cannot go wrong. And this is why I keep going on and I depend wholly and solely on the Lord Jesus Christ. I love you all, brethren, for more pastorship right down. My heart is always here with you. And I just want us all together one of these days to be raptured in the arms of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God richly bless you in the precious name of the Lord. 
as Sister Herica comes, we want to give you greetings from Sister Grant, that is Mother Grant in Chiloni. Um, me and Sister Nursey, Sister Nursey and I, uh, visited her on Friday, and she's doing pretty well. She's doing good. At 92, she's still up. If you hear that woman pray, my God, it put me to shame. Emancipator, consecrator, elevator, mediator. I mean, she rhymed the words then, but they all had meaning. And you know, it was sincere. It wasn't just a thing that she was doing. So Sister Grant want to greet Pastor Grizzle and Sister Grizzle of all the persons. She talk about you. She talk about coming to your home. She talk about washing your clothes, sir. <laughs> Everything. She give you a history. She give you a history of Faith Chapel and Bond Street together. And this is Mother Grant. So I'm saying to you, remember her in your prayers. Amen? Amen. 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 Sister Erica, will you come? Uh, this is our pastor's wife, for those of you that didn't know. Turn around, Sister Erica, may they see you. But Sister Erica, you have taken on the role as a pastor's wife over the years. And you have shown yourself truly to be a saint of God. And that's what's really most important. Showing herself to be a saint of God. Well, for that reason, we know that, you know, as your husband just said, there are stressful times. And I think maybe he's one of the stress, don't no? Is that right, Pastor? Amen. From the horse's mouth itself. But Sister Erica, we want to give you something. It's not rewarding. It is by no means can do what it's supposed to do. But But we want to give you a stress buster in terms of your massage, a facial. You know, when she come back, you know, we might have Mother's Day again all over, you know. When Rev C are, you know, the facial, the radiant coming from the stress massage, and a pedicure manicure. God reach you, bless you, Sister Erica. How can I say thanks for all the things that you have done for me? Things so undeserved. Thank you, all of you, all the men, Brother Chris. This is one of the best. You see the flower will fade. Thank you, Brother Chris. And, you know, we need to support our men's group. Men, we need to support our president because it is time like this that you know what is working behind the scene. You understand me? So, men, let me hear it from you. A great shout of praise the Lord. Praise One more time. God bless you, Brother Chris. Praise the Lord. And uh, our dear beloved Sister Wang, we just want to tell you thanks for being the person who you are. You are a very strong and powerful woman, and we really love you. You have uh, been there for our pastor. You have supported him. You have uh, taken care of him, and we're just praying and hoping for the day when you will be fully here. Because as I always say, whenever time Sister Wang is here, you know 
Pastor Wong shine like a olive oil. I can tell you that. He just shine bright. And we give God thanks for you, sis. God richly bless you and your family. Praise God. Now, all our deacons, wife, where are they? Went right here for me, please. All our deacons, wife, come and went right here at the front. <laughs> Any more for the... Yes, yes, come, come. Where the gift for the deacon's wife? Come, come. Come, deacons. I see you all have something beside you now. You'll never see them find your wife. And all who wife is here. Brother Chris, it's the same one you not telling no wife, say. The church one here? Yeah. Them say them don't want nobody here, the sweet nonsense of them, I say. Hmm. Praise God. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Look like Brother Marlon Bailey are planning another son. <laughs> Praise God, everybody. Praise God. Could we clap our hands unto the Lord? In, in, in the house of God, we have everything. We are not bored. We are not bored. We have everything. And I'm, I would like to see the young men come in the passage right now with the gifts. And I'm going to be asking all the mothers to stand. All the mothers to stand and when you receive a bag, we are going to be asked you to be seated. Begin to give them. I need someone on the restroom. Where are they? Young men, we choose you because you are fast. Begin to give them out, sir. And when you get them, you can be seated. <laughs> Praise God. You, you know, yes, don't pass Sister Clark there. Praise God. As, uh, as you receive it, you sit down. It's, it's, uh, it's as Pastor Wong would say, it's not something that we are paying you or we are rewarding you. It's just to show our appreciation for you. Mothers, you know, you have been there. You know, in the case where sometimes the fathers are absent, the mothers are always there. And we just want to say thanks to you, mothers. We just want to let you know that we truly appreciate you and we thank you. We, we as men also want to say thanks to our wives who have bought us children and who have been there for us and who have supported us in our low time and in our um, not so good time, you have been there. Myself, want to thank my wife for being there for me, for supporting me. And even sometimes when I make decisions and want to do things and she does not support what I want to do, she have her reasons. And the reason is... Uh, always good but i cannot see that because i want what i want and i just want to thank you for that madam paulette mattox i really love and appreciate you you have self-will and you are strong in your will and i really thank god for you because something so a woman like you is what a man like me really need although sometimes i really try to break that will but i really do you know and uh, during my time in 98 when my fall from grace so to speak and everybody turned to my wife and said leave him and uh, you know she stood there for me i really appreciate that 
really appreciate that. I really, I've never said that publicly before. I really do appreciate that when actually it was only two friends that said to her, you know, and she gave me an ultimatum. And she said, if you decide to stay with God, I'll never leave you. And I truly am thankful to God for that. I know I'm not perfect. I know I am self-willed to myself, but thank God, you know. When I dressed up this morning, she said, from your neck to your knee look good. But your foot feel a Ramparoon fan. So I said, well, thank God I am your Ramparoon fan. You know? She said, I'm the worst dressed man in chapel. And not because I can't do better, but I tell her for me right now is just comfort, not style. Because you ain't going nowhere. And for you ain't going nowhere, I don't care what nobody else say. And I'm truly thankful to God for you. It's been 25 years since she married me and she tell me she would do it again. Then I must suck me, I do. I don't only me dressing. <laughs> I do something good, man. Yeah, man, I do something good. Praise God. And what a, what a celebration for me today. Today is my birthday. I was born on this day, 1967, to the lovely parents of Dorothy and Franklin Theodore Mattox on the 10th day of May, 1967. Today, I am 48 years of age. And I've been married now for 25 of those. I'm giving God thanks. God is good, man. Praise God. So all the mothers here have received a token. Thank God. <laughs> Last year, I remember everybody didn't get and I promise this year that everybody will get. And, and uh, I, 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 we got 400 things and I said, Chris, if you make me shame this year, you know me and you are war. And I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. Thank God. Praise God, everybody. Could we all stand? You know, there's... You know, there's a song in the hymnal that I love. It's hymn 92. Hymn 92. Every time I feel a little bit down, I read this song. It said, Central never busy. Always on the line. It said, You may hear from heaven almost any time. You know this song? This the royal service, free for one and all. It said, When you get in trouble, give the what? Royal line a call. The second verse said, there will be no charges. So we now have to put on our plan. Telephone is free. It was built for what service? Just for you and me. There will be no what? Waiting on this royal line. It said, telephone to glory. Always what? Listen, the next part, it said, fail to get your answer. Satan cross your way. It's a by some strong desire. Take away obstruction. God is in control. And this is the verse I like. He said, if your line is grounded. And connection what? True. Has been lost in Jesus. Tell him what to do. It's a prayer of faith and promise. Mend the broken line, and you will, and your soul will be burning with the Pentecostal fire. Now the last verse: a carnal combination cannot get control of this line to glory. Jesus, can we sing that song?
Can we wave our hands to Jesus? Knowing that we have a direct line to him. Whatever the circumstances, whatever the problem, we can talk to him. You may be seated. The choir will be minister in Jesus' name. Come on, let me hear everybody. Praise the Lord. Come on, if you're here to praise the Lord, let me see, just lift your hands and just wave it to the Lord all over this building. Come on, if you happen to be in the house of the Lord, let me hear the shirt. Praise the Lord. Come on, shout a praise to the Lord. Let me hear you shout a praise one more time to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel good to be in service this morning. Hallelujah, good to see Pastor Grizzles. Good to see all our mothers out. Here this morning, let me just say a big happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers in the house this morning. Hallelujah. And I give a very special happy Mother's Day to my beautiful wife, Natalie. Believe you me, I mean the, the apple of my eye, I mean the joy of my spirit. That's who she is. Amen. But guess what? But guess what? I'm here to praise the Lord here this morning. I have, are you here to praise the Lord with the choir this morning? Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to sing a song that everybody knows. We're going to... We're going to tear down some strongholds here this morning. We're going to lift a praise to the King of Kings. We're going to lift a praise to the Lord of Lords. Somebody knows it this morning. Come on. Lift your voice and sing. Worship and give God the glory. Hallelujah. In the house today. Come on. Hallelujah. If you're able, stand to your feet. Come on. Come on, mother. Sing and worship and give God a praise in the house today. For it's good and it's great to be praised. Everybody sing. Every praise.
seen a warm up for heaven. Praise the Lord, everybody! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God when we get over to the other side. There won't be any time factor. Praise God. There will be no limit to our praise to Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a spirit of worship, a spirit of praise, a spirit of rejoicing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us give my wave offering right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, pledges. Hallelujah. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise God. So if you're bound, hallelujah, don't feel ashamed to praise God. If you're broke and your pocket have wool, don't feel ashamed to worship God. The anointing of the Lord is here today. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Heaven is in the atmosphere. Somehow, heaven is close. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We sense the times. And we know something is about to happen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Let's keep our worship right now. Let's keep our minds focused on God. It's not about us, it's all about Him. Praise God. It's about what He has in store for us this afternoon. Praise God. And if you came without the expectation, hallelujah, start expecting something. Praise God. And if you came with an expectation, just turn it up to Jesus right now. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if some of you are married today, you're in the potter's house. And he's able to smooth every wrinkle. Put every broken pieces back together. Hallelujah. Today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Say what you pray. Let me bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your presence that is rich within our midst even right now. We pray, God, that you will bless this word as it goes forth. That we will accomplish that which you will have it to. We pray that you will touch every heart right now, Lord, that our hearts be prepared to receive that which you have for us. Lord, provide good grounds, Lord, that the word, the seed that come forth, Lord, will find ground to germinate and bring forth that which you expect. We pray, Jesus, that you will minister, God, to those who are in our midst without you. Lord, that when the service is hope, that they will make up their minds to serve you. Touch our minister right now that is about to minister the word. We ask you to anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord, use him as a conduit to tell us what is it that you want us to do. And we ask that you will just pronounce your blessing as you have been doing. We ask your perfect will to be done right now in Jesus' name. Praise God. The anointing is reaching the house this afternoon. Praise God. There is liberty in the house this afternoon. And I don't care what your circumstance. I do not care what it is. The fact that God is here today. Praise God. He's going to deliver you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm careful how I go on. 
Hallelujah. Let's open our Bibles to Revelations chapter 3 and verse 11. And it says, could we all stand please for the reading of the word? It says, behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Let's say it again. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. And I also want to read verse 20. We said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Praise God. You may be seated, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, somehow, you know, the church has embarked on end time. Things surrounding the end time for this year. Praise God. And it is very evident based on what Jesus foretold us. Praise God. And what is in the book of Revelation? What's in the book of Daniel? Praise God. And in the books of the minor prophets, we know that something is about to happen when we look at what is happening around us today. Now John, in writing this book, he was banished, as we all know, on the Isle of Patmos. And Patmos was a Greek island, still existing today. Just a little island somewhere southwest of where Greece is today. He was banished there because they thought they could have silenced him. They banished him there because they thought that they could have done away with him and the gospel of Jesus Christ. But what man didn't know that it was all in the plan of God. Because if John wasn't banished there, hallelujah, and by himself, then he wouldn't have got that opportunity, hallelujah, to be alone in a lonely place so that God could speak with him and to show him the things that was going to come and the things which existed at the time. So the word here, revelation, praise God, is an apocalyptic, which means manifestation, praise God, or disclosure of things, praise God. So God disclosed to John the things which are at in his time and the things that was going to come to pass. Now all John was commanded to do was to write. So God is the revealer. God is the disclosure. But all John was commanded to do is to write what you have seen. Praise God. So even if John didn't understand, he wrote what he saw. Praise God. And that is why this book, hallelujah, is not an ordinary book. Because when God opened up that revelation, it revealed to John things that was on the earth. Things in heaven and things under the earth. So God showed John the whole dimension 
of what existed, not just in time, but in eternity. Praise God. Hallelujah. The first command given to John was to write to the seven churches. Praise God. That was in Asia Minor. And Asia Minor is today what they call the, the, the country of Turkey. That is in the Middle East. So that was originally called Asia Minor. And all of these churches was located there. From the furthest point to the closest point between them, or the furthest point apart, they were 200 miles away. And John was just offshore at Patmos. So that means he was to write a letter to each of the head in those churches and to circulate what God was revealing to him at the time. Praise God. Now some scholars will say that the seven churches were seven different dispensations in time. Praise God. But one thing is certain, all these churches existed in the time of John. And each of them was plagued with different circumstances. And that is why the letters to each of them was not the same. They were different. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. And just to give a, a bit, a preview or overview of some of these churches. The first letter was to the church in Ephesus. And this church represented the church or, or what Jesus explicitly spoke about was, hallelujah, return to your first love. Hallelujah. So it meant that somehow this church, that passion, that love that they had for God was diminished because of other things that came into their heart or came into their midst. So Jesus was saying, return to your first love. And what is that first love? That love that you have or had for me. If we look sometimes as when we come in as new converts, we are passionate for Christ. We'll run through a troop, leap over a wall for Jesus. But sometimes as time progresses, that fire begins to become diminished. Hallelujah. For God. But may I say in this end time, hallelujah, if you have lost your passion, if you have lost your fire, return to your first love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if your fire is diminished or getting low, you need more oil to pour on the fire. You need to get more anointing to let your fire begin to grow. Hallelujah. And if your fire has gone out, hallelujah, then Jesus, the fire master, is there to reignite you and to let you burn again for him. Hallelujah. The second letter was written to the church in Smyrna. And this church was referred to as a persecuted church. Meaning that they were going through situations. Hallelujah. You see, the thing to note is that in those times, prominently persons would have worshipped idols. So idolatry was one of the things that existed. Because the fact that this, th these churches were located in, in Asia Minor, you see, the history of these places is that these were where the Greeks and the Romans used to rule. So a lot of paganism was there. A lot of idolatry was there because they worshipped the different kind of gods. The Roman gods like Jupiter and Mercury. And they worshipped the, the Greek gods like Zeus who is the god of thunder. And Poseidon who is the god of the sea. And Hades the god of the underworld. 
These were the things they worshipped in those times. So this was what the church was up against. So when they preached Jesus, hallelujah, nobody understood what they were talking about. They were coming with a new kind of teaching. And so that is why they were persecuted for the gospel's sake. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And there was Pergamos. The church that needed to repent due to the doctrine of Balaam. Praise God. Because this doctrine of Balaam teaches you that because you are in a covenant with God. Praise God. Then I, and it's a blood covenant. You heard of the blood covenant spoken about last week. Then God is obligated to honor that covenant regardless of what you do. Praise God. And that's the doctrine from the pit of hell. Because you have got to live the life that is acceptable to Almighty God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because if you turn from that which God has given and ordained unto you, then the wrath of God will come upon you. And that was what Balaam did to the children of Israel. Because he couldn't curse them. What he did was he caused them to turn from God. To do idol worship. And then God in turn poured out his wrath upon them. So be mindful of the things that you accept. Be mindful of the things that you indulge in. Bottom line, if it's not saying Jesus, there is nothing at all. Hallelujah. I feel God. Praise God. Hallelujah. No, there was Tyra, Tyra. The church that had that false prophetess by the name of Jezebel. Hallelujah. Teaching them to go into fornication. And when we speak about fornication, we're talking about sexual sin praise God sexual immorality praise God because the, the word for fornication in Greek is porno and it comes from the word which means which is where pornography comes from so when you're indulging in those things hallelujah it's fornication hallelujah Hallelujah. It is sexual idolatry. Hallelujah. So these things were plaguing the church in Tyra Tyra. And then the church of Sardis was the church that fell asleep. Getting complacent. Hallelujah. Taking things for granted. Taking God for granted. Fell asleep. But it's time to awake. It's time to arise. Hallelujah. Then there was a church in Philadelphia that endured patiently. Praise God. So the Lord commended them because they had strength. They kept, hallelujah. Mm. Oh God, praise God. God is looking for a ready church. Mm. Praise God. This is the time. Now is the time. We have got to be ready for Jesus. Then we have the church in Laodicea. We know this as a lukewarm church. You're neither there for God. You say you're not in the world. You're trying to find the middle ground between the pleasures of the world and the things of God. And God is saying, listen man, make up your mind. Or I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. It's time to make up our minds. Are we over here or are we over there? Because God not coming for a lukewarm Christian. 
You better hot. Hallelujah. Or you stay cool. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to some persons here. Hmm. Hallelujah. Seven churches. Praise God. And wherever you think you fall in that seven, in terms of your personal situation, if you think you have a little strength, then let's ask God for more. If you think you still look warm, ask God to heat you up so you can come and fire for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now is the time we have discerned the times. The end time is not coming. The end time is here. And I'll tell you, in a little while I'll go into science. And to show you at the end time. Hallelujah. I'm not just talking. I'm speaking. Praise God. And I hope. That this message is taken serious. Because the end times are here. The scripture says in Matthew 24 and verse 23 that Jesus, when we see these times, he's at the door. He's at the door. So at any time now, he can turn that lock and open the door. Hallelujah. 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 We hear of wars and rumors of wars. I don't need to get into that. Because even though we're not in Russia, we're not in Africa, we're not in Syria, we hear of the wars. We hear about wars about to happen. We see it on the television. Hallelujah. Technology has started in the last 100 years. Like never before. When I was going to university in the nine, well, late 90s, the early 2000s, praise God. I mean, when somebody has one of those big old fridge phone, you're jealous of it. Right? Big fridge phone with a long antenna. Praise God. That was technology then. And I'm talking long ago, you know. Now, if you know how they sang some Galaxy 6 and the Android phone and all of these fancy ones, you're not saying anything. If you, walk, if you walk around with a fridge phone, everybody laugh at you. Praise God. In those days, the computer monitor was so big and heavy. Now you can take up the computer monitor and have to look good to see it properly because it's so thin. Technology evolving. Now you can watch on TV on your phone. Never used to exist. There was nothing called Facebook. Our Twitter, our YouTube, and I'm not old, you know. Well, you know. But yet these things are evolving. And every day about something else happening. A new discovery. Hallelujah. So the Bible speaks that men shall increase in knowledge. And shall go to and fro the earth. Now journeys which took years. By boat or ship. Just take hours. You go in a plane you sit down. 
And you say a prayer, you know, say God help the pilot. Praise God. For you to read safe. And that's it. In my father's days, there was no motor vehicle. Like what we have now, you have to walk. Or go on the donkey cart. No, you just go in a bus or a car, you sit down. You can't even sleep and you reach where you are. We take it for granted, you know. But I'm talking about what has happened in the last hundred years. And if you break it down in the last 50 years, and if you break that down in the last 10, 20 years, there are few things which are happening. Knowledge of men has increased. Praise God. The Bible speaks about earthquake in diverse places. We heard about the last earthquake in Nepal that killed over 6,000 people now. But did you know that in November 2014, those same people in the region of Nepal sacrificed 5,000 buffaloes Rats and chicken to their god of power. They sacrificed it for them to get prosperity. When you look at the fields of buffaloes that were killed, they were just lying across a field. 5,000 to their Hindu god of power. Our goddess of power in November last year. I know in April 2015, the 25th of April, a massive earthquake has killed them. Hallelujah. What the Lord said, I will not give my glory to another. Praise God. The goddess of power could not stop the prophecy that God said there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. For there is no refuge out of God. For he is our help. Hallelujah. In times of trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this is what is happening in our world. Hallelujah. Scientists, I may get a little bit scientific, but I'll try to be very simple because it's very important. And I urge the children of God, read. Read about the things that are happening in our world. Don't take it for granted. Read and get knowledge. What the Lord say, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Spend less time on social network and spend more time acknowledging what's happening so we can focus our eyes on, on our soon coming king. Hallelujah. No scientists are ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Praise God. You go to university and they tell you that man came from monkey. And all those are Nancy story. Hallelujah. They go and they tell you that matter cannot be created or destroyed. They tell you that the universe came from a Big Bang theory. There was one little atom, one little something, and energy came from somewhere, and it exploded and formed the universe. Hallelujah. Do you know man now is testing the bounds of knowledge? Man has... Scientists is now saying that the universe has no beginning, nor no ending. Man said the universe is infinite. It don't start nowhere. 
and it's not going nowhere. But it has changed over time. Man is now searching and said they have found that which caused the universe. For it to be as it is now. They were searching for what they call the God particle. Yes. And I'll try, okay? you got to know this. It's a little bit scientific, but it's, I try to break very serious. You got to know because it's very important as to what is happening now in our world. Now, this God particle. is what they say converts energy which you cannot see into things which are tangible. Praise God. So what they have done is that they are placed in France and Switzerland. They have built what they call the, what should I call it now? It's about 20 miles in diameter. Or 20, yeah, about 20 miles in diameter. They have built it. And what they're doing is experimenting how the Big Bang Theory would have started. So what they have done is that they have put the smallest atom Smaller something, which is called a hydrogen, which is what make up water. And they use energy for it to go around a circle as fast as they can. And they will try for those particles when they collide, if something comes from it, it won't be something tangible, it will be some form of energy you cannot see. But there are machines that they use to detect it. And it creates a certain energy. Now this was started in 2012. They built this, completely built it. And they did their experiment. So these things are going as fast as the speed of light. The fastest thing that exists is, is, is light. So let open that light and you shine it. That's how fast they make it go. And they detect what comes from it. Now, in 2012, they say, yes, we have cracked the code. We have found this particular energy, which is what makes up everything. And it is a driving force into things that come into being. So without this particle, there can be no matter. There can be nothing solid or tangible that exists. Now this experiment that they have done has diffused some of the old laws and theories that ever existed in science. But guess what? They are tampering with something that they really shouldn't be tampering with. You see, science and Christianity, they are not at odds. Only when you're trying to disprove the existence of God. Because science proves creation. Praise God. It doesn't disprove it. But when you're trying to use science to disprove creation, you're in problems. So what they have done is that they have used this experiment and said so they have found the God particle and used a lot of the Earth's energy to drive it because this is located, what they are doing is not on top of the surface. It is below the ground. So you can't see where they are. They are below the ground where they are doing it. Now, there are some famous scientists right now that is saying that they need to stop it. 
Do you know why they need to stop it? Because they are opening gateways that they know nothing about. And I'm not talking about Christian scientists. They are saying they are opening portals which they do not know what exists and what will come through those portals. They are saying they are opening things called wormhole and black hole. But you know what is happening? Because they are trying the dimensions of energy. They are opening portals that can unleash the gates of hell on the earth. Some science fiction. I tell you the most notable scientist, I said, stop it. Because at one point during the experiment, they said they found not a, an unidentified flying object. They found an unidentified lying object in the tubes. They don't know what it is, but something in there. Praise God. Hallelujah. They are opening gateways. It's when the Bible talks about things coming on the earth. They are opening gateways to unleash things on the earth. Hallelujah. Testing the bounds of science. Praise God. And what they're saying, if they continue for this too long, the earth is going to eat up itself. Because they're using the earth's own energy to do the experiment and dissolving the earth. We see here in places like Russia, in Siberia, there is some big caverns just open up. And nobody knows where it leads to. Not once or twice. Scientists cannot explain what's happening. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this is what is happening in our world. So soon and very soon, God will have to stop man. Just like how he stopped them building the tower of people. If God don't come quick and intervene, then what God make? Man will try to destroy it. But when God come, it will take his ready children and then to execute judgment on them who know not God and obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when I say nothing else matters, nothing else matters but Jesus. The songwriter said, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Nothing else matters. This world as we know it, is falling apart. Nothing else matters hallelujah 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 I feel it in the atmosphere something is about to happen something is about to change hallelujah He said the last trump is going to put in his appearance. Hallelujah. Jesus is at the doors. But some of you is at the door of your heart. Knocking. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not going to break down the doors of your heart. He's not that kind of way. He's polite. He's going to knock. 
You will decide if you want to open the door and let him in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I look at all that is happening right now, I don't know when some mad terrorist is going to go somewhere in Russia, steal a nuclear weapon, and just fire it. You see what's happening? These things are there. One day, they're going to be used up. One day, they're going to be fired. Hallelujah. Nothing else matters. I'm pleading with somebody right now. The trump is about to sound. The trump is about to sound. Hallelujah. Praise God. If God, is, if God is knocking at your heart right now, if you feel God's pricking at your heart right now, I beseech you, do not turn him away right now. If you feel the Lord knocking at your door right now, I'm going to ask you, I'm talking first to my unsafe friends, if you feel God knocking at your heart right now, I'm asking you, to obey that voice and come to the altars right now. If you feel God pricking your heart, I'm asking you right now. If afraid to come up, just lock your eye and take one step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can only speak. You have the responsibility to open your heart. One thing I have, I stand here I cannot tell you you're going to see a service like this again. If you feel the Lord knocking at your heart right now. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. God bless you, man. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The times are not good. The times are evil. There are wicked men in this world with wicked agenda. That want to control the minds and hearts of men. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to ask just... A few of our altar workers have to come right now and to speak hallelujah with those who have come to the altars right now. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Where are the young men? Where are the young men who have not given their hearts to the Lord? But is it a hearing of my voice? The Lord said, young men, I call upon you because you are strong. What you're wasting your, your time for? What you're wasting your youth for? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come to the altars right now. I'm still talking just to my unsaved friends right now. Hallelujah. Nothing else matters right now in your life. Nothing else matters but Jesus. Nothing else matters but Him. I'm still speaking to a young man right now. Hallelujah. If you're not saved right now, even just to come for prayer, come right now. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I soon, I soon come down, but I just want to ensure that if you feel the heart, Lord talking to your heart, don't turn him away today. Don't turn him away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say to those who are fearful. Hallelujah. The Lord your God will come and wave his mighty arm when you call on his name. And he will come and save. He will come and save you. He will come and save. to my brothers and sisters right now that you might hallelujah you may not have fully committed and I'm, when I say fully committed I mean fully commit your mind and heart to God hallelujah praise God I'm asking you right now there may be a time to recommit your mind, your heart, your entire being to God. If you may not have completely sold out to him, now is the time to completely sell out to Jesus. Just like how the Lord told John to write, I can only speak. Praise God. I can only speak. That the Lord needs all of our heart, all of our mind, all, all of us. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus, if you're struggling, if you're not sure where you stand with God, know is the acceptable time of the Lord. Let's recommit everything because nothing else matters 
nothing else matters but Jesus hallelujah could we all stand right now hallelujah hallelujah sing us hallelujah say to those who are fearful
so now. 